What is accounts receivable dilution and why is it important to asset-based lending? Welcome everybody to a quick shot on the Martinis with Scott uh, channel coming to you from a, a mountain lodge in Fernie, British Columbia. Uh, you want to borrow, let's say $100, uh, you want to borrow on, a, on receivables of about $100 and you have an asset-based lender who will give you 90%, so $90 on your $100. What they're going to do first is they're going to calculate accounts receivable dilution to make sure that um, as a lender they have the proper cushion that they're looking so, for. So the concept of dilution is this. You take that hundred dollars and all of a sudden there was a bunch of credits that go through your sub ledger uh, for you know bad billings or invoice mistakes or returns or what have you and all of a sudden the hundred dollars turns into ninety two dollars that is available for collection before you start talking about bad debts and other ineligibles. Um, so you've got so the lender now has has loaned ninety dollars on ninety two dollars of receivables, and that's no good. So lenders are looking to figure out dilution, and the math on the dilution is you'll have an auditor come in, and they'll look at historically say six months or twelve months of accounts receivable on your sub ledger, and they'll calculate every single credit that goes through your sub ledger that is not a collection or a bad debt. So that could be I have a list of these here. Uh, returns, um, invoicing errors, um, discounts, marketing rebates, write-offs, anything along those lines. And they divide that by the amount of invoicing for the same period of time, the six months, 12 months, whatever it was. So all the debits in your sub-ledger, and they come up with a percentage. And if that percentage is typically 5% or less, then you can get your 90%, if that's what this particular lender works with, you can get your 90%. Um, on those uh, those receivables, so ninety dollars on hundred dollars of receivables. If it's more than five percent, <clears throat> the the lender will start to um, will start to lower the advance rate on the on the receivables. So, and the formula for that is typically one hundred percent minus two times uh, the dilution number. So, let's say your dilution came out to be ten percent. Uh, rather than the 5% that is permissible. So uh, 2 times 10 is 20%. So 100% minus 20% is 80%. Now instead of getting $90 on the $100 of receivables, you're only getting $80 on the $100 of receivable. It's a big change. Dilution is a huge issue in asset-based lending. My advice to you is do your own calculation ahead of time. Uh, figure out what your dilution is and how it's gonna impact your borrowing strategy. Two other tips. Number one is you can normalize um, to some extent, if it's fair, your dilution. So let's say you've got a bunch of uh, credits that have gone through and it's for a one-time issue. Um, I had a client recently that did a bunch of true up invoices um, with a customer. So they were historical invoices that you know they, they wanted to bill more for whatever reason. Um, so they issued them, uh, but they issued them in the wrong currency. So they credited every one of those invoices and then they reissued them. And when they reissued them, they issued them without tax by mistake. So they credited everything. And then they reissued them a third time. You start calculating your dilution on that, it was massive, the deal could have cratered. We figured that out ahead of time and we were able to say to the field auditor uh, for the asset-based lender, look, this is a one-time thing, here's what happened. And we were able to get that normalized, in other words, excluded from the calculation. Uh, another thing that you can try is if you have one customer or, or small number of customers, say you're in the retail business and you're selling to, I won't name the name of who are my pet peeves on this, but you're selling to uh, a retailer, a large retailer who has a habit of coming back to you on marketing rebates, uh, penalties for this and penalties for that. And there's all sorts of little credits going through your sub ledger, but, but the rest of your customers are great. Well, what, and they're within that 5% permissible dilution. But what you could do is segregate that one customer and say you're an asset-based lender. Okay, I'll, I'll only borrow 80, give me 80%, $80 out of 100 on that, on that particular customer. But on this other package, on everything else, I want my 90 cents. And you can have that negotiation. It's fair, it's reasonable. There's no need to, to drag down the entire receivable pool for one or two particular customer that's unique from the others. A couple of hints for you. Understand your dilution. It's really important. 
Uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, quick shot on Lombertini's with Scott channel. Yes.